Hello, dear viewers and listeners. Welcome to our Teleradio Escuela Tarana, the school and the air program of DepEd Tagum City. This is your teacher host, Sir Kennelly G. Alimbon of Tagum City National High School. We would like to thank our official radio partner, Hope Radio 107.1 DXHS, where we are airing our episodes for junior high school. Thank you so much for your generosity. Today, you will be learning about the effects of changes in abiotic factors on the ecosystem. A lesson in Grade 7 Science, Quarter 2, Module 7. Come and join us as we continue our hashtag Scientific Adventures. So, get your modules, your notebooks, and your writing pens, and be comfortably seated in your respective homes. To discuss the topic, let me give you our teacher broadcaster, Sir Romel S. Villarobia. Thank you, Sir Kenny. Hello, dear students. We are very glad because despite the pandemic, we can continue learning through our Teleradio Escuela. Now, let us hear our learning objectives for this episode. Effects of changes in the abiotic factors on ecosystem. Towards the end of our episode, we will be able to predict the effect of the changes in abiotic factors on the ecosystem and show how humans contribute to the changes in the ecosystem. In your previous lesson, you have learned that biotic factors, the organisms, interact with their ecosystem. Now, how about the abiotic factors? Like sunlight and water. Do they affect the ecosystem? Yes. Let us know how the changes in these abiotic factors influence the ecosystem. Abiotic factors are non-living factors that affect an ecosystem. The term abiotic comes from the word a meaning without and bio meaning life. Abiotic factors include wind, sunlight, soil, water, atmosphere, temperature, and other relevant factors. They are the physical and chemical conditions of an environment. They determine the kind of environment an ecosystem will have. What is an environment? It is a complex of abiotic factors that act upon an organism or ecosystem and ultimately determine its form and survival. Each type of environment contains different abiotic factors that interact with each other. It may be deserts, forests, grasslands, and others. For instance, a forest has rivers, ponds, soil with organic matter, and usually abundant rainfall. In contrast, a desert has sandy and rocky soil and with low yearly rainfall. Adding to it, the way all the abiotic factors in an environment interact determines which organism can live in it. For example, an alligator, which needs a lot of water to live in, would have a hard time living in a desert that doesn't have much water. Ferns, in the same way, need shade and moist soil to live and would die if placed in a hot, dry, sunny desert. Changes in the abiotic factors also change the environment, which eventually affects the biotic factors interacting with it. In nature, you will find that if one abiotic factor is changed drastically, it impacts the availability of other resources within the ecosystem. For instance, the temperature of air and water affects animals, plants, and humans in an ecosystem. 
a temperature rise has the potential to change the way a living thing develops because it changes the metabolic rate of the organism. All living organisms have a tolerance level for temperature change. For example, a human being would die if he stood out in minus 50 degrees Celsius temperature for a length of time. Moreover, living organisms need water. Water covers 70% of the Earth's surface and falls as rain or snow over land. In an environment with little water, only organisms requiring a small percentage of water can survive. Other animals thrive in conditions with large amounts of water, such as marine animals and plants in oceans. It is a living fact that water is essential to survival. But, of course, every organism needs a different amount of water. Further, the atmosphere of the Earth sustains life. Animals and other creatures breathe in oxygen and plants grow because of the presence of carbon dioxide. Changes in the amount of these gases would also affect the organisms that depend on it. True enough, these are just few examples of how abiotic factors affect the ecosystem. Now, I believe that you fully understand how abiotic factors affect the ecosystem. So let us answer the following items by matching the given abiotic factor to its possible effect in the ecosystem. An example is already given for you to follow. Abiotic factor, temperature, effect in the ecosystem, polar bears will have difficult time if they live in a hot environment. The first abiotic factor is water. Very good. The answer is letter D. An alligator would have a hard time living in a desert than in a swampy area. The second abiotic factor is soil. Correct. The answer is letter C. Ferns need shade and moist area to live and would die in the dry desert. Third abiotic factor is temperature. That's great! The answer is letter B. A human being would die if he stood out in minus 50 degrees Celsius for a length of time. And finally, the fourth abiotic factor is atmosphere. The answer is letter A. Animals breathe in oxygen. It's great hearing your correct responses. Humans are part of the ecosystem and play an important part in its preservation or destruction. We need to understand how our human activities can contribute to changes in the abiotic factors, thereby changing the environment, and that in turn affects the ecosystem. For instance, some human activities can lead negatively to air, soil, and water pollution. Household combustion devices and waste, motor vehicles, industrial and agricultural activities, and toxic waste are the common sources of these pollutions. Changes to these abiotic factors contribute to greater death rate of organisms and even destruction to the ecosystem. On the other hand, there are also human activities that protect and preserve the environment such as recycling, reusing, and reducing the consumption of materials. Now you see, it is really up to the person to decide whether his or her actions would contribute to the development or destruction of the ecosystem. As teenagers, what role would you like to play in our ecosystem? Before you answer, please do remember this line, ask not what the ecosystem can do for you, 
Instead, ask what you can do for the ecosystem. Now that you're aware of how humans contribute to the changes in the ecosystem, let us answer the following questions by predicting what might happen given the following situations. I will give you 10 seconds per item to think of your answer. Number one, all the rock are removed from a desert ecosystem, what would happen to the population of rock-dwelling lizards and to the predators which eat on them? The possible answer could be that lizards would die and so would the animals that eat on them. I think the majority may also have the same answer. Very good. Question number two. A 10 kilometer area of trees is removed from the tropical rainforest to give way for a government development project. What might be the effect of this to the rainforest ecosystem? The probable answer could be that some of the living organisms in the area may die or transfer to other ecosystems. Of course, aside from this response, other answers can also be considered as long as they are relevant to the questions posted. Our third question is, as a young citizen, what will you do to lessen air pollution? The answer could be that you, as a young citizen, may do recycling and reusing of materials, lead advocacy campaign and other beneficial programs that lessen air pollution. I know for sure that you also have with you other positive plans that are essential in minimizing air pollution. And that is great news. Keep it up. After all the discussion and provision of examples about the effects of the changes of the abiotic factors to the ecosystem, let us now answer the following questions for our post-test. I will read the question and the options twice and you're given 5 seconds to answer. Shall we begin? Question number 1. Which is an abiotic factor in an ecosystem? A. Ant B. Decaying plant C. Earthworm D. Sand Time's up! The answer is letter D. Sand very good. Let's continue. Question number two. Which of the following might threaten the stability of our entire planet's ecosystem? A. Organisms B. Pollution C. Species D. Water Time's up. The correct answer is letter B. Pollution. That's great. Moving on to the next item. Question number three. Lizards and cactus are biotic factors in the desert ecosystem. That would rely on which abiotic factors? A. Insects and sun. B. Water and insects. C. Snakes and temperature. D. Water and soil. Question number four. Which is not an example of an abiotic factor? A. Typhoon. B. Cloud. C. Forest trees. D. Soil. Time's up. The answer is letter C. Forest trees. Impressive. And for our last item, Question number five. Which of the following best defines abiotic factors? A. Abiotic factors are the living factors of an ecosystem. B. Abiotic factors are the non-living factors of an ecosystem. C. Abiotic factors are neither living nor non-living factors. D. All are correct about abiotic factors. Time's up! 
The correct answer is letter B. Abiotic factors are the non-living factors of an ecosystem. Alright, and that wraps up our very short post-test for today. How well did you perform the activity? I'm impressed. I have a high hopes that whatever your score is, keep in mind that it should not define you as a person. Everyone has a different pace when learning new things. Keep learning and keep growing the knowledge inside of you. If ever you have difficulty with our topic for today due to some reason, personal or technical, you may replay this episode on our YouTube page that is uh, TC NHS TV High. And now for your assignment, answer the remaining activities on your quarter two, module seven, such as let us assess and let us enhance respectively. I hope that you have learned a fun field lesson from our discussion today. Till next time, goodbye. That was great and very informative. Thank you so much, Sir Romel. Thank you, students, viewers, and listeners for tuning in. I hope you'll learn something today. Stay tuned for more hashtag scientific adventures. For you to understand the topic further, you may do answer the following exercises in your modules. And you may also have an advanced study of the topics in preparation for your next lesson. Please make sure to be with us next session here at School in the Air Program of Department of Education. This has been your teacher, Kennelly G. Alimbon, your teacher host. Keep safe, everyone. Sa mga aral naming hatid Sa ang sumulok ka man kapatid Aabutin ka ng aming tinig Walang araw na sasayangin Edukasyon ipagpatuloy natin Anumang pagsubok at mga balakid Kaalaman